Hi everyone, in this video we are going to discuss this example. So we have to prove that cos x is equal to x has at least one solution. So we will solve this example with the help of intermediate value theorem. So first of all, we will try to understand what is actual meaning of it and then we will discuss this example. See that theorem says, let me draw a diagram, x axis, y axis and we have some interval a comma b. You can take open interval or closed interval, right? And we have a continuous function on this closed interval a b. So if f of a is positive and f of b is negative, okay? So suppose at point a function has positive value and at point b the function has negative value that means below the x axis. Function is continuous from A to B. So that's why the function will be like this. So that intermediate value theorem says there exists some point C between A and B such that F of C is equal to zero. This is intermediate value theorem. Okay, that theorem says if F of A and F of B have opposite signs, okay, need not be positive and the second one is negative. They should have a opposite sign. If f of a is positive, f of b must be negative. If f of a is negative, f of b must be positive. If this thing we have and the function is continuous, then between a and b, you will find some point c where the function has value zero. This is intermediate value theorem. So with the help of this theorem, I'm going to solve this example. So cos x is equal to x, this thing we have. So I'm going to define, we define, we define, I'm going to define a function f from r to r as, see I'm defining it this way, f of x is equal to cos x minus x. I'm shifting x on this side, so you will get cos x minus x, okay? Cos x is continuous function, we know. Cos x is continuous on entire real line r. x is a polynomial function, so that's why it is also continuous on r. Let me mention clearly, cos x and x are continuous on r. If we have two continuous function, their subtraction is also continuous. Therefore, cos x minus x is continuous on r. It means that f is continuous on r. f is continuous on r, right? Okay. So this is a basic condition and yes, our function f satisfies that condition. So let us find some points a and b, which will give opposite signs. Let us see, I'm going to find f of zero. Let us see what will be its value, f of zero. Okay, at a place of x, we have to put zero. It means cos zero minus zero. Okay, cos zero is one minus zero, which is one. That means it is giving positive value. Let me remove this part. So we will have some more space to write. Okay. So after that, we have to select our second point. Anything you can take. So I'm going to take uh, pi by 2. Let us see what will happen. Now, f of pi by 2. Okay. At a place of x, we have to put pi by 2 here. Cos pi by 2 minus x is pi by 2. Do you know the value of cos pi by 2? 0 minus pi by 2. 0 minus pi by 2 is pi by 2. Negative value. Okay. So f of 0 is positive. f of pi by 2 is negative. Let me show. So we are familiar with the graph of cos. It will be like this. But see, we have cos x minus x. At 0, at this 0, its value is 1. Its value is 1 here. Okay. Positive. And at pi by 2, we are getting minus pi by 2. At suppose here we have pi by 2, okay? So we are getting minus pi by 2 somewhere here. Starting point is here, ending point is here. So by intermediate value theorem, there exists some point C where the function has value 0, okay? Let me mention, therefore, by intermediate value theorem, there exists some point C belongs to that open interval 0, pi by 2 such that 
f of c is equal to 0. f of c means what? f of c. Let us put x is equal to c. You will get cos c minus c is equal to 0. I am shifting c on that side. Let me remove this part. So, cos c is equal to c. That means c is a solution of this equation. Okay, since c satisfies this equation, so therefore I can mention, therefore c is solution of cos x is equal to x. So that means finally we got a solution. So let me mention, therefore, therefore we can write cos x minus x, whatever written in question, I will write the same. Therefore, yes, has at least one solution. That means many solutions can be possible, but we got at least one solution. That is more important. So the example is over. Make a screenshot of it. Then we will stop. Thank you. See you in next video.